Well, the brace assembly for the rear luggage boot was missing on the right side of this coach, so we made the duplicate of the upright last week. Well, the 45 degree brace that goes back to the frame of the body has some odd twists and curves to it, but that's what we're gonna do this week.
So as I have the bottom of this side brace up underneath the body mainframe, if I bring this up tight here, you can see that the angle of this portion of the brace does not sit up tight against the mainframe of the body. So what I'm gonna do is loosen that nut on the top, which will allow this to be pulled up. And then I'll tighten that top nut back up. And I'm gonna take a torch right behind that nut and stress relieve that. And that'll allow this to sit up in this proper position where it should and take the stress off of this iron. So because of the location of where these bolts need to go through this frame, I'm going to have to disassemble this frame to the rocker, take this bolt off here and this whole assembly so that I can get my right angle drill up here to drill these holes and then reassemble this rocker brace. It appears to me that this is designed to be right up against the frame. I'm going to clamp that up tight, hold that in position, and I'm going to drill the hole that's closest. There's two holes in here. This will be the first one, and then I'm going to drill the second one, which will bring this up into the right position with the framework. Then I'll do my adjustment up on top. I think you can see this start to kind of lay out a little bit as that bottom toe on this iron flattens up against the mainframe. So now with the toe of this iron up flat, I can drill my second hole and that'll be just right where it needs to be. So now this brace iron wants to hit on the bottom and there's a gap here on the top. But if I go ahead and cinch this down, you can see it'll go where it needs to go, where this iron was. But if I take and heat this up right in this area here, it will relieve that pressure and relax it right to where it needs to be. So I could do this by taking it off, putting it in the vise, twisting this, taking it back off, putting it back on, and that would work also. But I've found that if I put these in a position like this where this needs to be and the bottom needs to be on any type of iron, and there's stress in that of iron, if I will take the, the torch and heat up an area where it's acceptable in that bend, it will just naturally relax and fit exactly where it needs to be without this on and off, on and off, on and off type of deal. Now I still have a piece of trim work that has to go right in here so it's going to be tucked in behind this iron. And this was some of the pieces that I already made. I haven't got them cut and actually fit. So I was concerned about my bolts that have to go to the iron on the inside. This is iron will come down on the inside of the box, whether that was going to be interfering with this iron here. But as I put this, this bottom here, this square portion here is about where it's going to be at. So actually my bolt is going to be above this brace, so we should be good to go go ahead and adjust this iron and it should probably stay in place and allow me to put this in in a little while. Well, I'll just let that cool off and hopefully she'll be adjusted for the right angle.
Now those of you that watched, I think it was a week ago when I made the duplicate iron here for the right side, I was debating on why this was tilted. I did square it up. And as you probably have noticed that my brace now fits with this straight, I did end up adding an inch and a half in length in order to bring this back into the position where it would match up with this bolt. I did it in a spot that I'm not going to tell you where, because I don't think you can see it and I don't think anybody is going to know it. Except if you watch this video, you know it. Where it is, who knows. Hopefully you can see on this left side brace, which was original, it comes up square and then there's a slight bend right here, and then there's another slight bend right here. This is bent to come away from the body, and then it bends here to come back up to the main brace for the luggage boot. And my speculation is why is inside there's going to be a rear seat and the seat arms are going to be laying out and this also allows for one of the top frames. So I think this is bent out to allow for that seat to set right in here. So when this comes back up straight here, this portion that I did this double bend on copying this original, it has kind of a little bit of a contour to it that's helping it make its transition from angling out to coming back square and actually has a little bit of a curve going back to where I'm speculating is the chain that will hold the rear luggage boot platform. So this other side, the right side, I have done some bending. So I have a clamped in position here where it needs to be. I've got the bend here which transitions it out away from the body. Then I have my second bend here also that brings it back to this frame here. But I haven't done this bend here yet. So I have the top hole drilled where this half inch carriage bolt is gonna go. Now this was a half inch carriage bolt that had the square head. I did machine it down, but I left it strong. So what I'm gonna do when I get to that point, I'm gonna heat this end up to where it's pretty red and I'm going to go ahead and force this down into it and let this shrink back down. Helpfully that will keep this carriage bolt from spinning when I go ahead and put this nut on. But I haven't put it in yet because I want to do this adjusting here and then I'm going to use this hole to tell me exactly where this hole needs to be. Then we'll drill the corresponding hole and get this all matched up. So initially, I think I'm just going to put this in the press and see if I can't get this to come back around kind of where it needs to be. Oh, this is kind of a guessing by golly, but I think I want to start about in here and just kind of bring this over a bit. We'll see. Well, that was kind of a by guess and by golly, we're a lot closer. What I'm doing, I'm hitting on this corner, so this needs to come around a little bit more. But different than the other side, I'm going to be hitting on top and have a space on the bottom. So I'm going to bend this just a little more right in here to bring this up. And then I'm going to clamp this in place and do the same thing. I'm going to heat this area up here and get this to relax into place. And I think we're going to be pretty close. While I'm letting that cool, I have a lot of dark shadows in the shop. And there's a sales rep for Makita, Donald Metz, that watches these videos and he's been kind enough to 
send some equipment as he sees that I have need. And he saw me working in the shadows and the last time was down in the apartment building. So he sent me this work light, which is pretty handy. It elevates up to seven feet or collapses right down pretty, pretty short. Now this is pretty bright, I don't get in there too much, but it has three different settings. So oftentimes this is just the, the ticket for what I need on my back shadowy corner sometimes. That's what helps you see a little more clearly some of the things that I do. It's pretty handy. Now this, this is not sales pitch for Makita. You all know that I like Makita. And Donald Betts knows that I like Makita. So this is a pretty handy little deal. Makes it pretty compact and take and go wherever you need. So anyway, as I mentioned in previous video, that a number of you are kind enough to send some things because you see that I would need them. They'd be useful and they make the whole video process a little easier and, and this is one of those, the workstation by Makita, non-paid advertising, but he's just kind enough to help me out. Well, we're pretty cool, we're not cold yet. That made a lot of difference, that keeps it right there where it needs to be. So I'll mark this where my hole needs to be. And then there's a couple other holes this has a swivel link in it which will hook the chain to the platform. And then this hole here, there's going to be a rod that goes from side to side. On the back of this boot, there will be a leather cover. And this cover will be folded around and stitched where this rod will go through. So this rod will actually keep these two irons from separating from each other and they hold the leather boot in place also that will cover the luggage to keep all the road dust off of it. So these three holes I'll need to drill on the right side. So it looks like this is gonna fit pretty well. I don't have it bolted to the mainframe yet. I'll do that. Uh, it does sit pretty flat to the frame, so I don't think it's gonna throw anything off. But once I get that bolted, I'll double check that and tighten up this nut. And if there's any little adjustment, it'll be the same process as I did on the left side. And But this makes the, the right side duplicate that somewhere, somehow, it got lost. So anyway, we should make our matching pair and this is what will carry the platform for the luggage rack. Anyway, appreciate you following along. Thanks for watching.